Hi, this is Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and we're in studio today with Michael Chiklis. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm really well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming in to talk about your new movie, 1985. Yeah, it's my pleasure. The first question I wanted to ask you is, mm -hmm. what were you doing in 1985? Well, that's why I did this movie, because it resonated with me. I, mm -hmm. I uh, graduated from college in the spring of 1985, and I think within two days after... I moved from Boston down to New York City. So mm. I was in New York City in the theater community in 1985. Right. Which was very Dickensian. It was the best of times and the worst of times, right? It, it um, uh, on the one hand, I, everything was new and right in front of me. And, you know, I was so excited about starting my new career. And at the same time, um, it was an incredibly frightening uh, time mm -hmm. as there was a plague that yeah. uh, was taking the lives of friends of ours all over, and it was scary and awful, and um, you know, hard to explain unless you went through it, uh, mm -hmm. unless you were there. It was um, because there was so much confusion, especially at first, in terms of what it was. Uh, you know, some people at first were saying it's some sort of blood cancer, and that you know, and people were afraid to go near each other. It was just, it was awful. Yeah. So when I read this, uh, I, I just, it, it resonated with me. I found myself, you know, uh, crying a number of times. I, I was a little worried when, when uh, Corey initially talked to me about it because he said I'd be playing his super conservative dad down in, in Dallas. And I thought, I, I just was worried that, you know, it would just be wrought with um, overworked cliches, you know, mm -hmm. that, that he would just be this one note. Uh, super conservative, you know, guy who, you know, was just hateful to him and awful. And mm -hmm. though he, you know, uh, it isn't without that side of it. Mm -hmm. um, what I what I really uh, thought was wonderful about the film and the way it was written is there's love in the movie. There's there's yes. tremendous love. Yes. And um, things are much more complicated than that. Just the that, that two-dimensional uh, look at things, you know, and that's, Yen, I think, was wonderful about really getting, making these real people on the page mm -hmm. and, and, and also in his direction. So uh, that's why I really, really responded to the piece. Right, yes, because the the hardline conservative father can often be a thankless role. Yeah, it's just sort of this one note, you know, cardboard cutout of a guy who is just hateful and unaccepting and blah, blah, you know, and that's mm -hmm. it. And that can just be, you know, I mean, it can be effective, I guess, for a couple of scenes. Uh, but, you know, um, I, I just responded to the whole film, too, and, uh, you know, uh, Virginia's role in particular... Uh, because they're, they love their son. Yeah. You know, they were raised a particular way, and they don't know how to reconcile it, mm -hmm. but they know they love their son. Mm -hmm. And that's what complicates so many things right. um, in life, is, uh, is our <laughs> connection to each other and love. Right, right. And it's a beautiful thing and, and, and an awful thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just uh, I thought it was a very... A super subtle and nuanced film yeah. and that w I really responded to especially since so much of the stuff that I've been doing is just you know especially lately it's just been head banging you know what I mean I don't you know that's not who I am you know that's a that's sort of a brand thing that you mm -hmm. get caught up in yeah and uh, I, I really sometimes like to do movies like that so that I can do movies like this mm -hmm. you know uh, you know we all have to make a living but you know you won't I like to play human beings. Mm. Yeah, and Corey Michael Smith's character, you know, the, the other side to the hardline conservative father is the son that doesn't want to open up to his parents, that right. is not willing to be honest with them because he's hiding who he is well, for whatever reason or what It's what a tale as old as time, right? Yeah. Especially uh, with members of the gay community, right? right. Uh, you know, the, especially then. Mm -hmm. You know, now we've come light years since then, uh, and we still have a long way to go, frankly. But at that time, and I, and I also, uh, I was, I was concerned initially when he said it was going to be in black and white, mm -hmm. and when he explained the reasoning for that, I thought, yeah, that's, 
that's not only really smart, it'll be poignant and it'll be immersive and I really get why he wanted to do that because, you know, 80s is known as the 80s, you know what I mean? It right. was pretty glammy and fabulous and there was lots of disco balls and, you know, just craziness. And he wanted to contrast that with the, the, the stark reality of black and white, you know. Mm. And I just thought that, yeah, I get it. Your Gotham co-star, Corey Michael Smith, actually ended up coming out while he was doing press for this movie. Which, which I, did, I didn't know that. I, I thought he was already out. Oh. But he was certainly out to, you mean to his parents? Um, I, th I thought it was just public. publicly. Publicly, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, I, I've, I knew from the, from, upon meeting, uh, Corey that he was gay. I, mm -hmm. that's just interesting. Go yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think this film showcases how difficult a process that can be for people? Brilliantly, and I think yeah. that that's another thing that you know I, I just found so compelling, especially. You know, growing up in the theater community and seeing this play out. I, you know, I happen to be a, a, a heterosexual man, but I watched this play out with so many of my friends and the trauma that some of them went through in in just contemplating mm -hmm. coming out. Yeah. Um, never mind actually doing it. Uh, so it's super important. I, I, I'm really heartened by my children because really if you speak to like my kids and their friends, it really shows you how different it is now, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, that, and in a wonderful way. Right. That, that people are allowed to speak their truth and, and be true to themselves. Whereas uh, at that time, you know, well, it's not that that's over. It's not like you just, you know, right. any more than, you know, racism just doesn't exist anymore. It's just not true. Mm -hmm. um, and we, again, we still have a long way to go. Uh, but I think that it's it's about teaching, right? It's mm -hmm. about learning about the other. Mm -hmm. And that's how you counteract xenophobia and all kinds of phobias is by being exposed to people and realizing, oh, I don't need to be afraid. Mm -hmm. I don't need to, you know, <laughs> I'm going to get really deep with you right now. Are you ready for this? <laughs> yeah. I just think that, um, you know, that this is something that I've been talking about a lot. I think that you know, we're born and we live and we die. Mm -hmm. And because of that nagging truth, that reality, people are afraid. And people seek things like religion and other things to make sense of it all mm -hmm. and to find some solace. And that's okay. And that's fine. But then when, here, here I am, I believe in, I have the set of values and beliefs that have been taught to me by my parents and family. And now here you come and you believe in something sort of radically different than I believe in. And it shatters my security. Mm -hmm. it, it takes my blanket from me. And people then experience fight or flight syndrome. They're afraid. Mm -hmm. So they either get mean and fight, mm -hmm. you know, my God's better than you, or God, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. or they run. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, it's a, you know, I, I study human behavior, and that's, that's just something that I've seen over and over again. Yeah. Do you think the younger generation has forgotten what the AIDS epidemic was like in the mid-'80s? I don't think they think about it at all. Yeah. It's, it's kind of miraculous, and I guess that's our fault. Um, um, there are some wonderful examples of, you know, there's, there's shows like Angels in America and others that they could go and, and, and see about it. But it, it, I guess also when you know something intellectually, it's just really, really different than when you understand it viscerally, when mm. you've gone through it yourself. So I think that intellectually, a lot of uh, younger generation, uh, the younger generation understands it, but they don't get it in their guts because they didn't live with that fear. They didn't see friends die. So it's just not visceral. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's another reason why films like this are so important. And another thing that this film kind of tackles is a very familiar feeling. I felt it also somebody who went to New York to go to college. Mm -hmm. That feeling of leaving your family to find a new family, which is your friends. Right. 
Did, was that your experience when you were young? Well, absolutely. And also to reinvent, right? right? Because everyone knows you as Mariah, who we grew up with, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they knew me as, you know, uh, you know, little chicky, because, you know, <laughs> my brother was chicky and I was little chicky. You know what I mean? So, you know, you want to break out of that, as it were, you know, and you want to form your own identity and become your own person. And that's part of what college is. And then just after college is sort of finding out who you are and galvanizing that. And then, and in my case, I, it was a hardship. I had to move away, f completely away from my family and stay away from my family. And that's different than most folks, you know, they grow up around their family, they stay mm -hmm. around their family. And that's a blessing. It's a beautiful thing to be able to, you know, the, like, one of the hardest things about raising my two children is I couldn't just go, hey, Dad, I'm dropping the kids off. Mom, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? That, yeah. that was difficult. But we made our own family mm -hmm. with, with surrogate brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles. And, you know, and, um, and thankfully we've done really well with that. But yeah, that's what you do when, you, when you're a young adult. You, you make a lot of mistakes and hopefully you grow and you mature and you learn who you are and, uh, and you have this sense of identity and you can move forward with things. How did you enjoy working with Virginia Madsen? Oh, she, she's amazing. I, you know, I, this was such a, a small film, right? And, and, and it was a short experience and yet I feel such an affection for it and I've I've done films where I worked months on the film and was like, uh, that's over. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and there's other experiences like this where, you know, you're there a couple of weeks and you really have a bonding experience with people and, you know, we're still getting together and hanging out, my wife and Virginia and, and, and Nick and I, um, and, you know, as friends because we, we connected and I, I just think we, we sort of related to each other. We're in similar places in our lives and, you know, I've always admired her work and, um, but she's also a really cool person. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I think she does really, really magnificent work in this film. It's been a decade since your Emmy-winning role on The Shield. Yeah, I know. <laughs> time, to, <laughs> time to get on that. <laughs> I mean, if you look at television today, can you see the influence of The Shield in programming now? Well... Uh, what do they say, uh, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And, <laughs> yeah. and there's definitely things that we've seen over the, over the last decade that have made us go like, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and um, it is it is lovely to, be, to have been a part of something that started a sea change in the yeah. industry. It was a historic change. Uh, you know, I mean, there were... There was HBO, I guess, and some premium cable. But the basic cable was, it was a wasteland. It was reruns, you know, and NASCAR. There was no original programming there. Not to knock NASCAR. It's just, you know, <laughs> not my bag. But anyway, um, you can cut that. Anyway, uh, no, but, you know, uh, it was cool to be part of something where, you know, uh, all of a sudden we did this, we were, we, we, it was sort of a David and Goliath thing. You know, where we, we gave the big guys a black guy, and it, it was pure. There was something yeah. really, really, sort of like um, the early days of the Sundance Film Festival, where a really smart group of people went, you got this much time, you got this much money, but go and make the show you want to make. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting. Yeah. Because you sort of go, wait, yeah, especially if you'd done a lot of network television like I had done up to that point, you know, and the networks tend to be sort of, <laughs> micromanaging about mm -hmm. things and to have that kind of freedom and to be able to just go and make the show you want to make is an extraordinary experience. Excellent, excellent. Uh, last question to you. How is Tom Brady doing? <laughs> Which one, my dog or, or the <laughs> Tom, dog. TV12? Um, <laughs> well, my dog is awesome. He's amazing. <laughs> and... Uh, he loves watching the Patriots, and <laughs> as, you know. He likes to see his namesake. Yeah, of course he does. <laughs> and he roots for him. He barks at him. He's really, really enthusiastic. Amazing. <laughs> He's cute. He, so obviously you've seen him, so you yeah. know how adorable he is. I'm just also a fan of irony, so I thought, you know, 
you know, you've heard the expression pug, pug ugly, right? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> a pug named Tom Brady. It's just a natural. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Michael Chiklis, thank you so much for being here. Oh, the movie pleasure. is 1985. Cheers.